In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to help keep your chickens cool in the heat of summer. We're going through a bit of a heat wave right now, and it's only gonna get worse. It's been in the 90s all week where I live. Today, it's gonna to be 98 degrees, and with the heat index, it's gonna feel about 105 to 107 degrees. And next week, they're expecting it to be in the mid-90s again for the whole week, and there's no rain in sight. So, since it's summertime, and I know I'm not the only one going through this, I figured I'll show you some nice easy hacks to help keep your chickens comfortable in the summer because if they're really hot and they're stressed, egg production's probably going to go down. That's normal. Even if you do these practices I'm about to show you, the egg production still may go down if it's hot enough, but this will definitely help. Oh, and don't mind the yellow on my hands. I just picked tomatoes. I started the day, as you saw, in the garden nice and early before it gets too hot because it's already hot and humid. It's only 8 o'clock. I actually planned on coming out even earlier when I got up this morning, but then I got caught up taking care of all the lizards and time got away from me. You can see her shedded skin from last night. There's my red lily white. He's fired down right now. That means since he's not awake, he's asleep right now. His colors aren't as vibrant. When they're awake and active, their colors get really vibrant. And I suspect that the tricolor female I paired him up with has laid eggs or is about to lay eggs. Fingers crossed that we'll have baby Crescigeckos soon. But it's still not too horrible yet, so let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna start with is pretty obvious, and that's with hydration. Make sure that your chickens have access to water 24 seven when it's this hot, and really at any time, but when it's hot especially, make sure that they always have access to clean, fresh drinking water. I personally like to use the rubber bowls, as you can see, as opposed to the actual chicken waters, because I feel like since it has no lid and it's not trapped in there, it stays cool longer, it stays clean longer, and it's easier to wash out and fill up. When it's really hot like it's been, and when the sun's really bright in the summertime, sometimes if you have an actual chicken water with a dome lid on top, they can get really hot and they can grow algae really fast, so I like using the bowls. You want to make sure that the water stays in a shaded spot so that the water stays cool longer. Refill it as needed. And it's not a bad idea to put several bowls out, especially when it's going to be hot. You can also use electrolytes, just like you would for yourself if you're getting overheated on a hot day. So if you use electrolytes, I do recommend that you keep a bowl of electrolytes and then a bowl of just plain fresh water as well, so that way they can have the option. So here's a look at some different electrolytes. I myself am familiar with using the three pack save a chick electrolyte. That one you mix one packet to a gallon of water. The vitamins and electrolytes will help give them that little boost that they need when it's really hot out and they're really feeling drained. So once you make sure that they're being properly hydrated, another good option is to make sure that they have access to a dust bath. Now this is something that you should have whether it's hot or not because chickens are going to take a dust bath every single day. It's how they keep themselves clean, it's how they keep mites off of their body. And in the summertime, it's how they keep themselves cool. You want to keep it in an area that gets full shade in the summertime so that that way it feels nice and cool to them. I use sand and diatomaceous earth. So if you keep it in the shade, that is going to feel really nice. Think about it. When you go to the beach and you find a shaded area, that sand feels so nice and cool. So that's how it's going to feel to them if they have that in their dust bath. As you can see, I have theirs directly under all of these trees so it stays nice and cool. When you set up your run, you want to make sure that you set it up in an area that does have access to shade. If you don't have an area that can accomplish that, make sure you set up some kind of roof or some kind of shade cloth to make sure that they can have shade because in the summertime, you don't want them in direct sunlight. That's not going to be fair to them. They'll be uncomfortable. They need to be able to have a spot where they can choose to go lay in the sun if they want to sunbathe, but they also need to be able to get away from the sun if they need to cool down. Another thing that you can do is you can get some of the big industrial farm fans or barn fans and you can use extension cords and set up the fans around your pen. The airflow will help keep them cool and it'll also help keep the flies away. And speaking of flies, I have a fly control video that I just recently made. With the heat comes the flies, so make sure you check that out. I'll put a link to the fly control video in the description below, so make sure you check that out. 
I've heard some people say that they also put a shallow kiddie pool in. You want to make sure that it's shallow and easy for them to get in and out of because you don't want any of them to get stuck in it or drown because they're not ducks. They're not the best swimmers. I've never tried the kiddie pool method. It's very hit or miss based off of what I've heard from other people that I've talked to and from some different forums I've seen online. A few people say that their chickens love it, but a lot of people said they didn't. So if you want to give it a try, go ahead. Just make sure that you give them plenty of supervision at first to make sure that it's going to be okay. And if you do go with that method, just make sure you change the water out every day and make sure it stays fresh and clean. Make sure you open up all the doors and windows on hot days like this so that it can air out and get some good airflow. My chickens during the day, as you can see, they hang out outside of the coop. But I still want the inside of the coop to stay nice and well ventilated so that way if they go in to lay their eggs during the day, they're not miserable. And so that way when they go in at night to go to sleep, it's nice and cool. Here's the leftover skins from the yellow squash I gave them last night. Gotta get rid of that. Don't want to attract flies. So now that we're on the topic of treats, you can give them some nice hydrating treats in the summertime to help. For hydrating treats, I would recommend something nice and juicy with a high water content, such as tomatoes. I just picked these and my chickens love cherry tomatoes. This variety is called Sun Sugar. Nice and juicy and filled with vitamins and minerals. You can also give them watermelon. My chickens really love watermelon. I grow it myself. I don't have any ready quite yet because it's still early summer. So in the meantime, if you don't grow it yourself, you can get it from the store, of course. But in the summertime, I highly recommend going to a local farm stand or any kind of local grower and supporting them and getting it from them if you don't grow your own. Apples are yet another good juicy choice. Peaches, lettuce, cantaloupe's another good one. And you can also do herbs. You can pick some fresh peppermint and you can even put it in their water so it tastes nice and cool and refreshing. If you see my other videos, you know that I have a divided run and that's because they're probably all gonna try to follow me. Okay, never mind. they're trying to storm through so I won't go in there. But I have it separate so that that way they can still have grass to eat. And this area I have completely shaded which is really nice because in the summertime it feels really good to them to graze in the cool grass. You can see that they've eaten pretty much all the grass in here the past couple weeks I've been letting them in. So I closed it off again so I can let this area recover. And I threw down some grass seed and you can see it's starting to pop up already. I used rye grass seed, annual rye. It germinates super quick, usually in about seven to ten days. So it won't be too long until the rest of it is filled out. And since chickens are going to the bathroom in there, it acts as a really good natural fertilizer, which helps the grass grow back quickly. Now we're going to go inside and I'm going to teach you how to make some different frozen treats for your chickens. Now I'm going to show you some different easy, cheap, frozen treats that you can make for your chickens. You can get an ice cube tray. These are actually frozen herb starting kits, but it works just the same. You can even use a muffin tin if you don't have ice cube trays. Or you can even use little Dixie cups and then cut the plastic away and get rid of that, of course, once it's frozen. But you get the basic idea. So you can put some different things in here with the water to freeze it. You can put different fruit, you could do watermelon, or you could even just chop up the watermelon and put it in each cube. You don't really need water for it because watermelon is basically mostly water. So it'll freeze just fine if you put it in here along with some other fruits and it'll hold the shape once you freeze it. So you could do watermelon, cantaloupe, you could do apples, berries. But if you're not gonna use fruit, you could also fill it up with water and you could put different herbs in here. You could put water in here and mix corn kernels in here and the chickens will get really excited when they see the corn. They'll really start pecking at the ice and it'll help cool them down as they try to get to the corn. Oh, you can use peaches. Chickens love peaches and they're nice and juicy so they'll freeze well in here. You could chop up pepper to put in there. I actually just picked these. Peppers are extremely high in vitamin C. They're really healthy for you and your birds. My chickens actually, believe it or not, aren't a huge fan of peppers. They will eat them, but it's one of their least favorite treats. So we're not going to go with these today, but peppers are very juicy, so they're a good hydrating treat. 
But for the sake of this video, I'm going to put some herbs in here and some berries. So let's get started on that. Monkey wants to help. We have rosemary, golden oregano, thyme, cilantro, dill, purple basil, chamomile, smells fantastic, and mint. We have peppermint, which as you know is very cool and refreshing. And we also have pineapple mint. So I'm gonna pick some different herbs and then we'll take it inside and get it in the ice trays. We'll do some regular peppermint and some pineapple. Golden oregano. Some thyme. The basil's looking a little bit heat stressed, so I'll only take a little bit of that. So when it comes to putting it in your trays, there's really no right or wrong way to do it. If you want to keep each tray its own individual herb, you can do that. Or you could mix them, or you could mix herbs with the fruit or the corn. Your chickens aren't really going to care. Just have some fun with it and get creative. We're also going to do some blueberries and some strawberries. Here we have some beautiful, fresh-picked local blueberries. But sadly, strawberry season is already over where I live. It was super short this year because up until this heat wave that we have now, we have been getting rain non-stop. It was horrible, and the rain just rotted the strawberries, and it, it was not a good crop for any of the farmers around here. So I had to get ones from the store. So I'm going to get these washed, and then we're going to make little popsicles out of them. You can cut these into any size that you want, but I figure if you chop them up nice and tiny, it'll fill up more of the cube better. Take them longer to eat it because then there's more to peck at. Okay, so now we're going to fill this up. And obviously fruits and vegetables are healthy for your chickens, just like they're very healthy for you. And if your chickens are eating healthy things, then their eggs should be healthier for you. And same with if they eat herbs. Herbs have so many medicinal properties. I'm going to do some as a mix of stuff and some as just one individual item. Blueberries are so rich in antioxidants. Oh, don't mind my broccoli, it's just soaking, I just picked it. So now we're gonna add just a little bit of water. The ones that are less full, I'm going to put more water in, and the ones that have a lot of fruit in them, I'm going to put less water in. Now we're going to get the lids on. And we'll put them in the freezer overnight. Once they're frozen, we'll check back. Once you have empty milk jugs or water bottles, hold on to those because you can rinse them out and then fill them up with clean water, put them in your freezer, and turn them into big ice jugs. You can then take those big ice jugs out, lay them down in the run, and if the chickens get too hot, they can lean up against them, they can perch on them, or just being near them will help put some coolness off around them. You can even put them in the coop. 
Just make sure you take them out and change them out. Because if not, of course, obviously they're going to melt and then the water will eventually become warm and you don't want warm jugs in there because that defeats the purpose. So make sure you swap them out the next day. Monkey, you're so cute. All right, it's the next day. It's extremely hot and humid out today. So let's see if the chickens like their frozen treats. Oh, and you can make similar ones for your dog too. You can use fruit and you could even do peanut butter, which they'd probably really like. So you can see the babies are hanging out in the little shade corner and they really like laying in that cool sand, especially Mrs. Danvers. She's my Brahma who's in there right now. She's been spending most of the day in there. But I'm sure they'll come over once they see that I have snacks. Whenever I come in the chicken run and all the chickens come up to me, it makes me think about the good witch from the Wizard of Oz when all the munchkins always flock to her when she comes out and sings. I'm just gonna pop these right out. And I just thought of this, you could also... Oh. <laughs> Yeah, don't be surprised. If you show your chicken something new for the first time and they panic, that's normal. They're birds, they're prey animals, so they're supposed to be cautious so that they survive. But once they realize it's edible, they're going to be all over this and they shouldn't be afraid again in the future. Once they, <laughs> once they learn what it is, they'll be fine. But you can see how quickly they get over it and they come back because my chickens are extremely tame. I've worked with them since day one, so they know to trust me. So you can see how quickly they got over it. But anyways, as I was saying, you can also freeze different bugs and mealworms and grubs in here for them too. They would really like that. You can get dried mealworms at your local feed store. If for some reason you don't have one near you, you can get them online too. So not only will this keep them cool while they peck at it, but it'll also help hydrate them and it'll keep them occupied as well. Birds are extremely intelligent creatures and chickens are no different. So it's good to give them some mental stimulation. You can also get a bucket and put a lot of different fruit and treats in the bucket and then just put one big block of ice and treats out here for them. But I would only recommend that if you have a large block because if you only have a few birds you don't want them to be overwhelmed and eating too many treats especially because fruit has a high sugar content. You always want to do treats in moderation. Make sure that they're still eating their regular layer of feed especially at times of stress like this when it's really hot out. I'm going to put the rest of these in different areas around here where it's shady so it doesn't melt quite as fast. So that way they can all spread out and have their own little treat. And then tonight I'm going to give them more yellow squash. I have so much yellow squash, I've been picking it just about every day. So they've been getting it every day. And it's really funny because they'll peck a hole into it and then they'll eat all the flesh out of the yellow squash and they'll just leave the skin behind. And then I have to come in here in the evenings and get rid of that so I don't attract any rodents or flies. Always stay on top of your food scraps. If they don't eat everything, make sure you discard it by that night. I got some fresh beet greens in their little foraging ball there. I have a couple different videos on my channel about some different chicken toys, treats, and enrichment items. So check that out if you want to see some ways to keep them occupied. Oh, and one more product I wanted to touch on before we go. There is something called NutriDrench, and it's a really strong vitamin supplement that you can add to their water. You can give it to them if you don't see any issues, just as like a precaution, or if you notice that they seem kind of sluggish or just they aren't handling the heat or the stress of the weather well, you can give it to them then. Here's a quick look at what that looks like.
I really like this product. I think it works well. But the same thing, if you give it to them as a precaution, make sure they have access to plain fresh water as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you like and share to help educate other chicken owners. There's so many new chicken owners, so let's help spread the word so they can learn how to keep their birds healthy. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.